This is how a prank show from 2003 ruined the internet. You might think I'm exaggerating here, but I'm being completely serious. Well, I'm rarely serious about anything, but I do mean it when I say this. We are aware of the pain that has been caused. One of the true scourges of the internet these days are prank channels. From the days of old YouTube to every modern platform, it has spread like the plague. And I believe it all originates from this man. This is Ashton Kutcher. You may know him from his half-assed apology video about supporting Danny Masterson, but he got his start back in 1998 on That 70s Show. And at its peak, it was extremely popular, garnering millions of views per episode, and it shot Ashton Kutcher into stardom. He used this rising fame to start a reality show where he pranked unsuspecting people. Wait, not that show. This show. It was called Harassment and it didn't last long. During one of the first pranks, disaster struck as it went horribly wrong and they were sued for $10 million. The prank involved a body being dumped into a pool at the Hard Rock Hotel in Las Vegas and let's just say it didn't go over well with the residents. Can you imagine a kid on vacation cannonballing into a pool and seeing that? That's a core memory right there. They decided to change up the formula a bit and instead prank celebrities who are more conscious of their public image and would be less likely to freak out on them. Although as we'll see later, they weren't all so nice about it. The pranks were often done in public places and were over the top, but believable. The goal was to invoke an extreme reaction from the target and get them to freak out. Is it starting to look familiar now? Ashton of course was too famous at this point, so he employed people to perform the pranks for him while he stayed behind the scenes and directed it. He would monitor the video and instruct him through earpieces. Side note, one of the people he employed to prank Taylor Swift was comedian Andrew Santino, who is now one of the hosts of the Bad Friends podcast with Bobby Lee and I didn't realize he was a regular on that show. The Taylor Swift one was a pretty good prank. Justin Bieber, who was in on it, convinced Taylor Swift to set off some fireworks, like the Roman candle ones, I guess they're called. Man, whoever invented Roman candles must have been insane. He was like, yeah, I love fireworks, but I wish I had the chance of blowing up my hand while using it. That flare then proceeded to light Andrew's boat on fire, forcing him to bail and make his way to shore on a dinghy. Damn, that landing was definitely rougher than they intended. To add insult to injury, it was his wedding day. His best man also almost drowns trying to swim to shore. Swift was rightfully freaked out and apologized profusely. She was visibly shaken and concerned before it was revealed to be a prank. She was a good sport about it and everything was fine. This was one of the better types of pranks, I would say. It's the type that freaks you out for a moment but doesn't attempt to provoke you into anger. Unlike some of the other ones we'll get to later that go horribly wrong. Hey, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps out a small channel like mine, like you wouldn't believe it. And I'm gonna respond to every single comment no matter what. So write literally any comment below. Ask me anything or tell me about yourself. Whatever it is, just anything and I'll reply. Another good one like this was when they convinced Drake that an earthquake was happening. Drake was lured into the prank by being told he's going to meet Joe Biden, at the time just vice president. He was driven to the scene of the prank in a car which was rigged up with hydraulics to simulate an earthquake. There were actors outside of the car pretending like they were getting thrown around and props were rigged to come crashing down. Drake started to freak out and apparently there's also some unused footage of him curling up into the fetal position on the lap of one of his what do you call them, entourage. <laughs> Things started to get even wilder from there. A pregnant woman accidentally gets tased by a secret service taser. It's nuts. When they finally reveal it's a prank, Drake is relieved. He laughs it off like a good sport and everyone has a good time. These are all good pranks and I really believe there is such a thing as good pranks. I don't know what happened to the world, but people these days think physically assaulting and harassing people in public is a prank. I don't know. Maybe that's just my boomer talk, but those pranks will come up soon though. I'll talk about those later. In these pranks, they set you up in an unlikely situation. You get momentarily freaked out or embarrassed before the truth is revealed and everyone has a good laugh. There's even a scientific theory about comedy that explains this, and I'll just very quickly go over it. It's called benign violation theory. Benign violation theory asserts that all humor derives from three necessary conditions. The present of some sort of norm violation, be it a moral norm violation, social norm violation, or physical norm violation. A benign or safe context in which the violation takes place, and the interpretation of the first two points simultaneously. In other words, one must view, read, or otherwise interpret a violation as relatively harmless. I think that checks out. There's no chance of anyone getting hurt in those pranks. 
there's a mostly responsible TV crew around to shut things down if anything gets out of hand. But the other types of pranks is what I think led to the insanity that is YouTube and TikTok pranks. They're the ones that are designed to provoke an aggressive response. There's no real thought to it. They just want to make unsuspecting participants mad to get some good content. It's the equivalent of your sibling doing that thing where they're like, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you until you finally hit them. And then all of a sudden you get in trouble and they win. It's just the laziest type of content. And I'll explain why I think Punk laid out the blueprint for it. One of these rage bait pranks was when they went after Kanye. Kanye was in the middle of shooting a music video when a man dressed as some sort of bylaw enforcement an officer or something, I don't know, came up and demanded permits from him. Kanye's crew was in on it too, and when they were unable to show permits, the officer said they needed to shut the whole thing down. That is when Kanye did this little dance routine. He had to go to Paris. I gotta go to Paris. I have to go to Paris. After the officer dude tried to take the film from Kanye, he got really pissed off. Things started to get physical as Kanye grabbed the film from his hands, and he managed to fight them off before he sprinted to the van and drove off. I'm sure some of this stuff is staged, and I thought this might be too, but and then I saw this happen. That guy got spun off the car like a goddamn top. That could have ended really badly. Ashton Kutcher had to sprint after him like Usain Bolt to tell him they was all staged. I feel like they gave Kanye a minute to chill out because I just get the feeling that there was a long break between these cuts. You gotta be careful with Kanye because now nah, now nah, now nah, that that don't kill him only makes him stronger. What even is the prank here? It's just a guy coming in and being a dick until the target gets pissed off and then reacts. See where I'm going with this? There's also the one with Zach Braff where some kids pretended to ruin his car and Zach Braff chased them down. He wasn't supposed to catch him, but he sprinted so hard. He literally grabbed the child and some people say he physically hit him, but I don't know, man. They definitely didn't show that one and they cut it out to make it look like he wasn't the bad guy. He did talk about it later on a talk show and he said he did hit the kid, so I don't know. Another one like this involves The Rock. That's right, Hollywood's golden boy, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, kind of lost it a bit on this one. It actually started off as a good prank. The setup was, while Dwayne was getting ready in his trailer, an electrician comes up and says there's a problem and he can't use the electricity. Dwayne says, yeah, sure, and then he leaves his trailer to go do something. And while he's gone, they swap out his trailer with a different one. When he comes back, he sees the trailer is on fire. Then it blows up completely. <laughs> This is when the electrician comes back and confronts The Rock about it, accusing him of using the electricity. Dwayne seems pretty shocked about the whole thing, but pretty calmly defends himself, saying he didn't use the electricity. A fake police officer shows up and says he needs to get a report from Dwayne, and at this point, Dwayne seems a little worried and panicked. And that's when Ashton Kutzer jumps out and tells him it's just a prank. Just kidding, that's how it should have actually happened. They should have ended the prank right there and it would have been good old time. But no, that electrician guy keeps harassing Dwayne, just continually escalating the situation, trying to provoke a stronger reaction. And it gets to the point where The Rock's clearly agitated, but the guy just keeps pushing and pushing. Finally, The Rock just snaps and grabs the dude, but luckily his team holds him back. Only after this do they tell him he's been punked. The Rock was about to ask him if he could smell what he was cooking. That joke works because he was just starting off in movies at the time and everyone still knew him for wrestling. Just making sure you got the joke. This one was almost good. It had a great setup. Everything was under control. The trailer was fake and they didn't destroy its property and the fire department was all there to keep things under control. All good stuff, but then they resorted to the cheap tactic of harassing someone until they snap. It's the golden formula of all YouTube and TikTok pranksters. Now, I typically avoid prank channels like The Plague or like that other thing that we had to avoid a few years ago. But the internet is so plastered with them, I've seen many over the years. I often get exposed to them secondhand by channels like Moist Critical. So to actually watch a bunch and research for this video was painful. I was so goddamn annoyed by the end of it. So please like this video and make it worth it. I'll start with one who's been around for a while and it seems like he's not posting as many videos, but he still uploads once in a while. This one was just a few weeks ago, but thankfully they're not getting as many views as they used to. He seems to be posting shorts, but they're also getting relatively low views considering he has 3 million subscribers. Let's watch one or at least a clip of it. He says he didn't participate in this one, but he was behind the camera and it was his idea. When I wasn't in this one, I was filming this one behind the scenes. For so the whole brilliant idea to the prank is that they go around telling people they stink and then spray them with some Axe body spray with the intention of getting a reaction. Very much like the bad punk pranks. My favorite part is he's not even getting the reaction he wants. Most of his targets just laugh it off. So in order to get a good thumbnail, he ends up fake fighting one of his crew. Drop it, man. Drop it. 
poop. Cat poop. Here's another horrible one that's clearly just trying to piss people off. Just purely provoking people, not clever at all. These are the OG YouTube pranks and it clearly follows the punk formula. It's just like the rock one, but with no production value. He just pushes and pushes until he gets a reaction. Oh, and he also called them social experiments to make them deep, I don't know. Now I think it's gotten even worse with TikTok. Short form videos skip over any kind of clever setup that I mentioned earlier. Good pranks are possible, but they just get straight to harassment and physical assault. This TikToker goes by Jay kind of funny, which is ironic because he is the exact opposite of that. I'm sure I'm the first person to ever make that joke. And he does a ton of these irritating public pranks. His staple when he can't think of anything is yelling this phrase in people's ears. Now I'm not a violent person and my first reaction is to de-escalate things, but in this case I think I would involuntarily just start swinging. Tough guy. Thinks he's a tough guy. Just thinking about someone's hot breath in my ear just makes me sick. Here's one where he tries to assault someone and I know people will say, oh, it's just a blanket, it can't hurt. It doesn't matter, you don't throw things at people. Maybe his target has neck problems and something like this actually would injure it. You don't know, so just don't do it. Again, it's super lazy, just irritating strangers in public. Okay, one more and that's it. I think we've all suffered enough. Live here, we are live here in Atlanta. We are live here in Atlanta. We are live here in Atlanta and they didn't have, they just got the Donald Trump smoke shot. <laughs> What a genius prank, how did you think of that? It's something I would have done when I was a literal child, but even as a kid I had the sense to do this to a friend and not random strangers. This guy's just an idiot. There are an endless stream of these because they inspire others to make this low effort content, and anyone with a phone and lack of shame can make these and that's why it's plastered all over social media. And they get views too, so like, I don't even know who to blame. It's the viewer. It's your fault. This is totally meta. I haven't even looked at what's on Facebook and frankly I'm scared to. I know Punked wasn't the first prank show, it was inspired by shows like Candid Camera and Just For Laughs Gags, but those pranks followed a different formula. And they never tried to escalate the situation, it was all just meant to be fun for both the participants and the audience. Punked really laid out the blueprint for all these horrible prank shows and channels that followed. And that's how Punked ruined the internet. Thank you so much for watching, if you liked the video leave a like, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.